before I let someone else have a chance. Can you tell me if there's a role you wish you had had a chance to play, but you never did get a chance, or maybe you're still hoping? Nah, not now. I, I, I want to tell you, uh, I did a scene from Romeo and Juliet in, in the actor's studio. Best thing I ever did. They loved it, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm um, just if you get an old woman stood part, that's how I'll play it. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm over here. In 1988, you wrote your autobiography, As I Am, and you also signed uh, a letter to Gary Cooper's uh, widow, As I Am. I wanted to know um, what made you choose that title, although now we've heard your humor and who you didn't like, I think we know as you are. But could you explain why you um, chose that, that title, As I Am? Well, I think it's a good title. And As I Am is As I Am. There's no question. Uh, I don't know if you know that uh, Rocky Cooper, she died about uh, two or three weeks ago. I liked her very much in the end, you know, she was a, a lovely woman. And Maria, I, I adore Maria, I really, I, I had lunch with her about three days ago. She's a lovely, lovely, lovely woman. And I like Rocky too, and you know. But, when you go through hell, in the, in, in the end, it can turn out well. In the book, you also wrote that you knew Ronald Reagan was going to be president. I think you said um, that's what he said his ambition was. Did you talk politics a lot then? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, he... I, I remember when we were in... But the, the, what, when I was in London with him, is really, you know, when we were so bombarded, it was... Uh, and he, oh, he, he loved politics. And uh, I remember, we used, we went out, this is many years ago, and my dear friend Helen Horton, she was going with the, uh, I'd gone to Northwestern with Helen Horton, uh, and she was going with a, a dentist in, in England, who she later married. Um, and he, when we, when we were there, and Helen wasn't there, but. H Hamish, he drove us every place, and I know that um, that I, I Hamish he had a good idea because he had a book of cartoons, and uh, and he gave us one to choose our own, and I forget what I chose, but I think Ronnie he chose one like something like the President of the United States. It was such fun, and um, but he didn't know he was going to be the President then. But, but he was. Does that answer you? Oh, yes, definitely. Thank you. I know. All right, before I embarrass myself, I'd like to take a second to welcome you to Bhutan. <laughs> to welcome me to where? Uh, welcome you to Bhutan. <laughs> <laughs> way back when, uh, Lucille Ball and Jesse Arthez had a TV show, uh, I believe, Lucy and Desi Comedy Hour. My question is, did you ever appear on that show? No. No, I did not. Um, I want to tell you, though, um, Vivian Vance, uh, she, uh, I, I, uh, I, my life is so very odd, but I, I got the, my first job was understudy of Voice of the, of Voice of the Turtle, and I understudied it in New York. Uh, and I almost went on one night because the darling woman who was playing the second lead, you know, there are only three people, the two women and one man. Uh, and I understudied both women. And she didn't come back, she'd gone to get a divorce. <laughs> and it was snowing out, she didn't come back. And I was dressed to go on. And well, the door opened and she came in. And I said, oh, you break my heart. And she said, you want to go on? Go on. And I said, oh, you better ask the leading lady whose name it was, I forget now. And she said, no, Donnie, you must go on. So that one fell through. 
And then I, I got another job in a play, and I went to Boston with it, and we closed in Boston. And uh, the night we closed, I got a telegram from Alfred Deliagra, who was the producer. And by the way, it was his sister where we all met, uh, Greta Garbo. <laughs> Does that make sense? Uh, uh, and um, now where was I? Where was I? Okay, well, that's right. And I got a telegram from Alfred Deliagro saying, come back with us. And I was sent to Chicago to understudy with the company. And Katie Stevens was there, Hugh Marlowe, and uh, Vivian Vance. She was, played the other woman. And it was New Year's Eve, the, the day of, when New Year's Eve would come. And I spent the night with my dear friend Helen Morton, who was <laughs> and, um, and I got a call saying, you're on the night, because Vivian Vance has had a nervous breakdown. <sighs> well, I was so thrilled, I went. <laughs> and and uh, I, I, Helen came early. And uh, Helen tells me that when I put my, the, the one where you put your feet up on an auto, ottoman, and um, I put my foot up and I had a hole in my shoe. <laughs> and that was funny, <laughs> according to it. Um, but I was so brilliant that night. I was brilliant. And they were so thrilled. You and Katie, they were just delighted. And the second night, I weren't so good. <laughs> so they called rehearsal. And uh, I played it for about three weeks, four weeks, and then, you know, they had this woman come in to take my place because I was too young for it, really. I was, I was 19, and it's a woman in her 50s. Or something. But it was good. I liked it. What was that question? Isn't that terrible? I start to talk, and I forget what the question was. Well, you answered for me. I asked if you uh, I just said that I, I had played with Vivian Vans uh, once. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she wouldn't have that. I don't have a question or a second question, so you don't have to worry about getting mixed up with it. I have a comment, and I don't want to sound contentious, but I'd like to dispute one thing that you said. Uh, I don't think that you need to wait for old lady roles because I do not see you as an old lady at all. I think you look like a very young, active advisor person. And I would not cast you as an old lady if I were casting you. <laughs> And we were, 
I, th I think it was last uh, November, October, November, that I had gone for another showing of, uh, of the film. And it was in Ohio or someplace like that. And that's where my son was. He was completely grown and uh, he'd been married three times and divorced. <laughs> but I liked him. I mean, he was really a fine, funny man and we had a great time. So when I go to Hollywood, I must contact him. <laughs>